You are looking at reinforced iron plate factory. This factory is composed from one universal factory blueprint. And this blueprint was stuck a total of 12 times and is currently producing 360 reinforced iron plates per minute. This is the result of me creating about 100 factory blueprints in Satisfactory over the past several months. And today, with this creation, I want to revisit my factory blueprint for reinforced iron plates and implement all the crazy things I have learned by making numerous factory blueprints. I have made this blueprint way more stackable, way more efficient, way easier to connect and handle, and as usual wrap this blueprint with an exterior. While this satisfactory blueprint is super advanced in field of construction techniques, it is designed in a way that you do not need anything higher than Mark III belts. So when you unlock Blueprint Designer in your progression, you can immediately start using this blueprint. You can make blueprint of your own or just use my blueprint available for free in the pinned comment under this video. So without further ado, let's dive in! Alright, so this was my old blueprint making 22.5 reinforced iron plates per minute. It is all included production chain where you can accrue resources on the one end and get finished product on the other end. And for this reason, I have used recipes like bolted iron plate, steel screws, solid steel ingots and iron alloy. And this combination allows for the most compact machinery setup. But this recipe combo is not the most resource efficient in any capacity. Yes, it is miles better than standard recipe, but it falls short when compared to stitch iron plate recipe. With stitch iron plate and iron wire alternative recipes, you can remove every resource other than iron ore and still use less iron ore than in my old blueprint. Downside to this recipe is increased amount of machinery for the same production. Challenge here is to fit all the machinery while condensing production as much as possible, thus reducing the amount of total external belt work and connections. And while I have learned a thing or two about stacking machinery in Blueprint 4x4, it is still not enough to justify the full production line with smelters or foundries. This is why I decided to make iron ingots externally in different Blueprint factory. I have shown and shared this modular Blueprint smelter in my previous video. And with this separation, I can even exceed the amount of reinforced iron plates produced in every single blueprint. My old blueprint was able to make 22.5 units per minute, while this iteration is capable of 30 units per minute. And this is with only one machine being overclocked to 133%. Everything else is on ordinary 100%. Also, there is no hard clipping. If you accept the hard cleaving and, well, overclock maximal out of the machinery while totally disregarding the exterior, well, it can be like 80 plus plates per minute, but, well, this is a story for another time. So with the normal ratios in the end, we need to fit a total of 5 assemblers for stitch iron plates, 5 constructors for iron plates and 9 constructors for iron wire. And here where three-dimensional fun just begins. So while you can totally go away with 4 levels in some cases, for the most part using 3 levels in the blueprint is the only way to achieve anything without hard clipping through the machinery. And 3 levels also opens up a huge window for 3 dimensional manifolds. Let's start on the top with the assemblers. For a long time I was thinking that stacking more than 3 assemblers per level in 4x4 is pretty much impossible. In fact, you can totally fit 6, but this requires clever use of verticality and conveyor lift holes. Here I will use only 5 since I want to have an angle and maintenance shaft on my exterior, but principle stays pretty much the same. You place assemblers with intakes in the middle. Then you place one splitter line right in the middle on the assembler base level. Then you make the lift holes for the secondary assembler inputs and here you can use the notch tool introduced with update 8 and it can be totally done in update 7 without the notch tool but with update 7 you will need to eyeball holes from the down below which is kinda inconvenient and the notch tool is well the best feature of the update 8. Then you connect conveyor lifts to the assemblers in. As the next step, you get those lifts, but only on the one side under the assemblers. Then you get those lifts that you connected only to one side of the assemblers and connect splitters directly to the lifts. Once this step is done, you connect the second line of lifts directly to the splitters. In this manner, you have the lifts that are connected to the splitters and the splitters that are connected to the lifts. Everything is snapped. Perfect. 
Now you can finish all the belt work on the input manifolds and continue with the assembler output. In some cases, you cannot use output manifold down below, but this time around I opted for the ceiling manifold. To make this happen, you need to place conveyor ceiling support just far enough so Blueprint Designer allow you to connect the conveyor lifts. And as previously, you just connect the mergers directly to the lifts and do all the belt work. So in a sense, we just use total of 3 levels with 3 separate manifolds to place up to to 6 assemblers on the one level. And I know the comments under this video, technically this is the clipping and people will say this is too much, but this is the soft clipping introduced as a feature with update 5 and it is nowhere near compared to things like clipping buildings into each other, funneling bells straight through machinery or connecting lifts through the floors. This is nowhere near that level. Alright, alright. With the assemblers done, we need to care about total of 14 constructors. It is totally doable on two levels, and here I just use the central assembly manifold as the central line to make connections super easy. I am constructor output into the middle and daisy chain ingot intakes through the two levels on the two opposite sides. And this is one of the reasons why I use one extra level for some extra belt work. On the most lowest level we have simple splits and I need to make omnidirectional input and vertical manifold over here. And this is where it gets even more interesting. Good challenge in the blueprint design is to make the blueprint as stackable as possible. And if you add to this equation exterior, it becomes even more challenging. And for the mid-game blueprints like reinforced iron plates, it should be limited by Mark III belt. This way it will be available at the lowest stage of the blueprint progression in the game. It is really easy to place Mark V belts everywhere, but then it limits your options to use blueprints in other saves and wastes resources. And it turns out that for the production of 30 siege iron plates, you will need a total of 262 iron ingots. This fits exactly on the Mark III belt. Unfortunately, this is just above 260, and that number, 260, would have been way more convenient since this is exactly Mark V belt divided by 3. And also this is the number that I usually structure my modular smelters around. So, Kind of inconvenient, kind of will force you to use some load balancing, but well, it's still convenient because it's just under 270, so you can just top up your belts and call it a day. For this blueprint, I have decided to go with a 4-way symmetry stacking as the baseline for the horizontal axis. This have an advantage of requiring only two walls, and well, considering that I am using one of the most costly exterior options as the painted beams, well, this is a nice resource saving. Also, I think just getting the baseline of 120 plates per minute in one place is a nice amount to work with. I have all my connections in the corner of the blueprint and this have sort of maintenance shop that include the ladder for early game progression. But then I want to have more. And this usually leads to, well, just repeating buildings over and over and this leads to very boring type of the mega factory design. In this mega factory, I have production of something about 405 reinforced iron plates per minute. And this production is spread across half a dozen buildings. So I really wanted to have something big, but yet something using Mark 3 logistics and not Mark 5 belts. And by stacking this blueprint 3 times vertically, I can achieve production of 360 reinforced iron plates per minute. But how do I connect 3 separate 270 lines of iron ingots with only one universal blueprint variation and with only Mark 3 belts? Well. Quite simply by making omnidirectional intake. And this is the intake that have three conveyor holes that eventually being merged into one line. So by only connecting either line, you can totally have functional blueprint. In this way, you can easily stack blueprint three times vertically and just align three different conveyor lifts with different conveyor holes. On the out we have only 90 plates per vertical stack, so one can easily just wrap everything in the vertical manifold. Also with a small sandwich layer one can connect all four sides of the four vertical stacks in one place and just then it will put everything into sandwich layer maybe, but then there's a benefit to that, you can use just separate production lines and four separate outs of separate iron plates can be beneficial, you know, you can balance things around and well, the flexibility is the key. So, what are the benefits of stacking in this way? First, I do recommend to place this building around 4 pure nodes with access to 1 impure node. There are several places on the map where you can pull it off, also you can use combination of normal and impure nodes, there are a lot of places. 
iron ore is pretty abundant but if you go higher than that then kind of runtime of the iron ingots or iron ore would be just too much for my liking so going bigger you have disadvantage to be honest and it's just easier to transport less amount of iron plates than the bigger amount of iron ingots simple as that also with the pure nodes you kind of can evolve this facility with the nodes itself so we can start with one stack with the four-way symmetry and 120 units per minute then you upgrade your miners and get another stack and finally with mark three miners and mark five bells you can upgrade to total of three vertical stacks and have your total production of 360 reinforced iron plates per minute Full building, will... Full building will require around 3k iron ingots and this can be easily summed up by having like 12 lines of 270 iron ingots. This is not 100% efficient, you will lose something about like 100 iron ore which is I think like 2% or 1% or something and you know like... After all, we are talking about prefabricated universal blueprints and not custom-made factories. With custom-made factory, you can be always like 100% efficient and stuff, but usually you are not, so whatever. Uh, but with universal blueprints, you're kind of saving the time and you're also kind of saving your hands because clicking all those machines when you're creating mega factory, well, this is like several hundred thousand times probably. When with the blueprints, it's like 100 times and you are pretty much done. So there's that. And another mention is the exterior. On the exterior, I'm just using the painting beams and the gradient this is the seven step gradient i'm just using the online tools to make the hex colors i will be including those green hex colors in my blueprint pack well as the text file and also you can use your own colors why not like you can use something like orange you can use blue blue uh wait a second so english doesn't have different blues so you can go from like navy blue to light blue so, this was Reinforced Iron Plate Factory with lowest level of technology with close to zero overclock. And I think you cannot really go higher than that with separate ingot production. And as usual, my blueprints are available for free in the pinned comment under this video. Thank you very much for watching, have a nice one, and Yakis, out!